Grail. Now, my next guest has climbed Everest twice. He's lived with over 30 tribes around the world and he has had many ups and downs in his business life and on his adventures. Pat Falvey recently spoke at TEDx in Wexford and now he is in studio to share his adventures and tell us all about his new book, You Have the Power. Good morning to you, Pat. And good morning, Shauna. Great to be here in um, down here in Waterford. Yeah, and a lovely Sunday morning it is as it well. It is. Well, what can I say? And I know you're going to spread the positivity already. You just have that vibe about you. Uh, that's it. I, I mean to say like you have the power so therefore here we go. <laughs> Let's take it back a little bit because I know you're, you're here to talk about the book but how did this all come about? You know you're you're now a motivational speaker, you're an explorer, you know you're, you train people. Where did this begin? Well I suppose it all began back when I was about 14 years of age and basically came from a poor background, 5,000 council houses. I had a dream and uh, everybody has a dream. There's not one person listening to this radio has a dream but my dream was to become a millionaire. And uh, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but with the positivity that my grandmother built into me, I left school as a bricklayer telling everyone I was going to become a millionaire. And of course, what happened? Poor side of the city. Everybody laughed. And um, I just was determined, kept on actually forcing it through, right? Okay, by actually having affirmations and visualizations of what I would be. And I remember going to my father and it, again, it's about positivity and it's about lessons. And we're all mentors, you see. So therefore, this is all started by being mentored by my grandmother and my father. And I turned around and uh, I said, I'm not going to be like, you know, should I go back to school? And he said, he gave me a great bit of advice. He said, son, you're a dreamer and we're all dreamers. So he said, dream and dream big. But remember, it's in the following of the dream is where the success lies. Let achieving it be a bonus. Four years later, I was a multimillionaire. And can I just take it back to that you talked about the affirmations and, and was that something that you consciously um, took on board every single day because you hear about people doing it and, and maybe not um, continuing and, and is that where the kind of fault lies, I guess? Well, I think, yeah, like I think what happens is a lot of people have setbacks and in any dream, goal or aspiration, what you're going to have is you're going to have, you know, fallbacks or failures. And I think what I learned from my earlier years, especially like by the time I got to 29, like I was completely broke and I tried to commit suicide. And it's only at that point in time I started learning the lessons because I was, as you can well imagine now, a 14 year old with a dream, ending up a multimillionaire, thought I had the Midas touch, unable to read or write, 200 people working for me, turning over in excess of 72 million at the day's rate coming from the north side of Cork City. And I lost it all. You know, I didn't have the skills or the team to keep going. And lo and behold, with a lowering of self-esteem, and this is what happens with a lot of people. You know, when something fails, they become depressed and they don't fight back and they think like it's the end of the world, right? And lo and behold, it happened to me. I was married then with two children, thought I was a complete failure, thought I was no good to anybody and uh, tried to take my own life. Only to learn, right, okay, later by admitting my depression and by talking about it, that uh, people, more mentors came behind me. My family had my back and they came back and they said, look, let, let the failures be a lesson. And I did. And this, what happened is I went hill walking after trying to take suicide. So it means getting away from the hustle and bustle of modern day life. And I went for a walk, climbed a small mountain. Then actually the second time on the hill, I was so excited I had succeeded in something small. It didn't cost any money. Second time on the mountain, I said, what's that? And they said, Karen Tool." And at this stage, uh, the courts were taking my wife and myself to court to take our family home. And uh, I couldn't stop thinking of the fact of climbing Karen Tool because it was my Everest. And when I climbed it, I just turned around and I said to the guys that I was climbing, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. And then I said another affirmation. And seven years later, I was on top of Mount Everest. And I had done, you know, like it, this new dream took me on a new course of life. But what did it do? It rebuilt my self-esteem, which rebuilt everything else. And I learned then, right, OK, about the aspects. If you fail, you get back up, you dust yourself off, you don't feel sorry for yourself. You accept your failures and learn from them and fight back. And in the book, you have the power. Like, it's all about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. For me, everybody is ordinary. There's not one person in this world that's not ordinary. It's what we do that makes us, with throughout our life, extraordinary. And how how many books in are we now? I'm five books in. I was illiterate till I was 30. Uh, in the last couple of years, millions of people have seen the last film that I've done. And I've, I never did a film till I was in my 50s. And it's on Netflix. It went on world release around the world. A film I did on K2. 
And what I try to do in this new book is to show that anybody can do anything. Like people I've had that climbed Everest were ordinary people. I've had a 58-year-old do what Tom Crean and Erna Shackleton done, which is cross South Georgia. And all the secrets are within this particular book about you and you only have the power. There's nobody else can give you the power. But what I try to do in the book is give you the attributes so that you can actually have the self-belief, the want, the ability to set goals, the ability to drive yourself. And all the secrets are in there. And you mentioned Everest, but of all the adventures that you've taken on over the years, what's been the standout one? Well, there's been a number of standout ones. I've done 93 expeditions. I've actually lived with 32 tribes, studied 18 religions. Now, that's, you know, when I was 50, for instance, I uh, I thought I was actually a film star in a film. When I wrote that book, it was called The Stories I Thought I'd Never Tell. Mm. And instead, when I looked at the pictures, they were real. Um, so now I have, uh, this is my fifth book in, and there's another one out for next year, which is called The Accidental Rebel, an autobiography. And uh, which is also a part of the series of our new uh, presentations, right, OK, that we will be doing, which is called The Accidental Rebel. And all of this kind of leads you to the motivational speaking that you're now doing on a daily basis, I presume. Yeah, on a daily basis all around the world. Now, like I've done hundreds of thousands, like hundreds of thousands of people have come to see my shows and seminars and stuff like that. And, you know, it's it, for me, it's all about giving back. You know, for me, when I stand there and someone comes up and say, oh, we did that or we did this or we took your advice on that or we have a dream. Can you tell us like, you know, like we're, we're, we're in a bad place at the moment and through the seminars and through that, you know, I get such great gratification. Like it's not about me. It's about them. I, I have actually gone through the whole process. It's about visualizing it and it's about the self-belief and it's about going for it. and It's about feeling confident. And if you never get there, as my dad said, like dream and dream big. It, it's the fact that you have that dream. It's the journey along the way and you're going to get loads of stuff done. And this is what I try to profess in the book or, you know, to try to teach as a mentor now, because I've gone through the whole process. I was an apprentice, a mentor, uh, sorry, uh, a master, now a mentor. And now I'm going back into new things again, like the filming. I'm an apprentice again and I become the master and the mentor. And for the next 20 years, I have so much stuff that I want to do you know, that I'm becoming an apprentice in each of those areas. And I know I'll become the master and then the mentor again. And that's exactly what motivation or inspiration. I, I can't motivate you. I can inspire you to be motivated yourself. OK, you really are one of those kind of advocates for keeping the dream alive. And Pat, obviously, there's loads more to come. We, we need to talk to you about the team building work that you do in companies. And obviously, nowadays, even more so because people are under such huge pressure that that's kind of really relevant. We're going to take some music and we will come back to you then. This is Jonas Blue and Perfect Strangers on Beat. Perfect Strangers on the Sunday Grill and I am still joined by a world-renowned adventurer, Pat Falvey. Pat, you're still here. You've still got loads more stories to share and uh, advice to give us. And here I was thinking you'd beat me off it. Not at all. Okay, Trudeau. well here we go so again. <laughs> you have the power, isn't that what your book says? That's it. If you put your hand up like this and clench your fist and say, I have the power, then you have the power to do whatever you want to do. Can just you, just, f- you just stay with me all morning. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I can do that too. So listen, we have to talk about... Um, the team building workshops or courses that you run for companies? Yeah. Well, basically, I run them for companies and personal development. And like whether it's in a company, it's all about personal development because the people that we bring into the company, like the most important aspect in any company is the people themselves. Unless you were able to motivate the people and unless that they believe in their own leadership and their own self-belief system, what will happen is the company will fall apart. And that's what happens in lots of companies. You know, I went into a project recently where I was like where 2000 people were being displaced and my job was to motivate them to think that what they're going on to next will be better. Right. And, you know, unless that people love what they're doing, you're not going to get the best out of them. And the sad thing in businesses nowadays, you know, they're not actually harnessing that. You know, everybody like that works, a lot of people will say, oh, I have to work. But if you can harness that to say like that the work that you do that you love, Right. Or if I'm not doing it, I'll be far worse off. In other words, if I was on the dole, if I was anything else. Right. And in your lifetime, I'll give you an instance in the book. It says from the time we're born, we're dying. And, you know, in the total aspect of our life, we're only going to get 80 years. And in the universe, like which is 4.8 billion years old, they were only a blip. So if you think you're important, like forget it. So and the other side of it, you're only a blip. 
So you might as well enjoy yourself to the best of your ability to reach your full potential and to leave your legacy the way that you want it. And to do that, sometimes, even though you can think negative, there is a way to actually switch that around to being positive. And that's what I try to do within organisations, within companies, to get people to start believing that change is good. In other words, like, say, if you were in one company, you had to move to the other company, right? Change is good. Everything is for a reason. So just adopt it and actually just go with it and build yourself up to the top 10% within the organization, right? And if you do that, and if, if you want to get rid of yourself and go from it, right, you will never be got rid of. And if you move on, people will always take the top 10%. So that's my whole you know, and, philosophy in life. And work life takes up such a huge part of our lives. So if we're not happy in what we're doing, and if, how can we be motivated? And that's exactly it. But like, you know, 80% and I've done a survey in companies, 80% of people working in companies don't like what they're doing. And then you ask them why. And it's a lot of it has about being the bad apple in the barrel. If you come into an organisation and you say, this is a terrible place. Well, then that affirmation is going to make you actually feel like I'll never get to the end of the day. But what happens, you're also mentoring and you're driving that into other people as well. So organizations now are trying to see how they can make their people happy, have a, a nice balance to enjoy where they're at. And that's my job. That's what I do is I come in and I say, it's very important that you adapt to the challenge of change, that you adapt to the fact, right, OK, that you like what you're doing. And if you don't, please get out right, and do something else. And do you believe that, you know, the life that you've led so far and, you, you know, you, you've studied with over 20 tribes, has that enabled you to come back here and do the work that you do? Has it enriched your life in that way? Well, it's really enriched my life because like when I went first, you know, after I tried to take my own life, I went to find myself and I went out to the Himalaya and I lived with the Buddhist monks like, you know, for a small period of time. And what I learned was that life isn't a rehearsal, it's a performance. So if you have a dream goal in life to do, just do it, right? Because, you know, otherwise, you know, you it, like it'll be gone. So for me, it's all about doing the best that you can possibly do in your life. And I believe everyone have an Everest. You have an Everest. The person listening to us have an Everest. The Everest is the metaphor for our lives. Yeah, right? You don't have to go off and do something absolutely crazy to That's achieve this. And it just happens that I've got the platform because I've done all those crazy things like, you know, like I became the only person in the world to do what I've done. And then people say, can you tell us about it? And I'd say, tell you, but I'm an ordinary guy. Like I just had a dream. So if you have a dream, it doesn't have to be to climb Everest. For me, my next dream, my biggest dream is to become the best grandfather that I can be. It could be for you to become the best wife or the best mother or, you know, like to be the best at what you're doing. And what I try to instill in people, it is forget, you know, the fact of what I've done and what I haven't done. Like listen to what, you know, the lessons I have learned, which is you, you yourself have your own Everest. You yourself are a dreamer and you yourself, you know, should not sleep in the dusty recesses of your mind. You should take that dream and run with it and make that a reality. And even if it doesn't become a reality, you have had an amazing journey. And I try to teach the lessons of how to have an amazing journey in your life. And it's coming up to Christmas and we're doing a kind of top 10 books that should be on your list. And You Have the Power is the name of, of, of yours. But what do you hope that people will um, feel or take from it once they finish reading? Well, my legacy, right, OK, that I would hope to leave is that I enthuse people to go out to become the best that they can be and to succeed and to look at themselves every morning and say, I have the power and I have the power to be the best that I can be, even though that sometimes might entail failure. And if it is failure, learn from the successes. So remember, you have the power. It's a, like, you know, I, like it's it's a book that I have loved doing, right? Because I know it will influence people, not alone in Ireland, but all around the world through my seminars, lectures, presentations. How long did this one take you? This one have taken a lifetime. Really? Yeah, well, like all the, all the gems in it has taken a lifetime. In writing it, it's probably, you know, after taking about two years because I wanted to get it right. Like it's broken down very simply. There's a lot of pull tags there. Like you could just go through the pull tags. There's a lot of it, you know, like there's lots of sections, right? Okay, where you can just delve into it. This is a dip in and a dip out book, right? Okay, which also follows through with a, like a two day seminar if you had wanted to go to it. But this book, you know, for me, is a passion that has taken a lifetime of stories and about two years, right, okay, to write. And I love the fact that I haven't now finished. It's part of my legacy that I will leave to the human race. 
Oh, it's fantastic. And we mentioned the kind of team building work that you do. Do you do one-on-one session work as well? Yes, we do one-on-one session work as well, but it's a very unusual one-on-one. Like if you want to have a one-on-one with me, you have to come down to me. We go out on the hill. We actually take our brain, we put it on a shelf. And then what we do is we discuss what you want. Because the most, like you cannot achieve anything unless you know what you want. And most people aren't very, you know, very many people don't know what they want, right? And I think that's the first thing, to want something, to have a goal, to have a visualisation, to have a plan, because without a plan, you can't go anywhere. It's like if I was to say, I'm going back to Killarney today, I have to have a roadmap, right? So therefore, like, but, but I know I'm going to Killarney. But like lots of people, like, you know, they're sitting and they don't know what they're doing, where they're going or what they want in the future. Well, Pat Falvey, I have no doubt that you will continue to inspire. And uh, I know you, you don't say you motivate people, you inspire them. But I, I, I have a feeling you're going to motivate people listening this morning as well. You have the power. Where can people get their hands on it? Well, they can get their hands in all good bookshops. It's in the bookshops in the next two weeks. Get onto my website, www.patfalvey.com and actually you know, go to shop and you can buy it there and just put in a little inscription and I'll inscribe it to you. But what I do want to do before I go, I just want to tell, ask everybody, you know, to take into their mind now what they have in their mind, a dream, goal or aspiration for next year. And what I want them to do is I want them to stand firm, right, okay, and enact the, the endorphins in your brain, put their hands, you know, clench like this and say, I have the power, okay? I have the power, I have the power, Now, what I do know is you and you alone, not me, have the power to achieve anything that you want in the future. Thank you very much. You're brilliant. Thanks a million, Pat Falvey, and have a lovely Christmas. I'm allowed to say that now, I think. Ah, yes, it's Christmas now. (laughs) Lovely to meet you. Still to come, we'll hear about the...